Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. Okay, YouTube friends, here we are with a long-awaited channel update. Hard On Gear channel here with the uh, big news of 2023, at least as far as my life goes. So, 2022 was a big year. Went from 10, 12 years of working in the forestry, wildfire, wildlife response kind of work. Gravitated towards wildfire as much as I could and basically got into a bunch of jobs where I was driving around a lot, listening to a lot of different audiobooks, podcasts, uh, doing a lot of diving into history and stumbled across all the podcasts that I'm sure if you guys know which podcast I'm talking about, the five or 10 basic, uh, you know, military leadership dudes, we all friggin' know, but it started with a long journey down the Jotter, uh, Jocko Willink and Jordan Peterson books and podcasts and basically ended up with me joining the military. No regrets. Super awesome. Very happy with that decision in 2022. I actually joined in 2020, ended up getting a two year delay because COVID kind of slowed the military recruitment process down. Anyways, Finally, after two years and four years overall of dialing back my jujitsu, uh, really changing my lifestyle in ways that really only my friends and uh, family can understand to make sure that my body, mind, and spirit was kind of squared away and ready for this whole military thing. Oh, and hey there, viewers of the Hog Channel. If you wouldn't mind, if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and click the like button as it helps the channel out and gets this video out to more knife enthusiasts. So while there will always be people who are more prepared, more squared away, and more informed before they came here, I gotta say through basic and my uh, infantry training, but I was pretty much confident and capable to the utmost degree as far as a person who doesn't have any military experience, any military family or anything like that, just through, uh, you know, just a little bit of induced suffering to what degree a person can really do on their own when they have no experience in this stuff. But, you know, cold water, early mornings, lots of just uh, dumb little sacrifices that I had to make in order to steer my life towards this. Now, while most of the folks I listened to were ex-SEALs, CIA, uh, Special Forces kind of folks, that was pretty much, you know, what you get access to on the internet these days, and at least what the more popular stuff is. There is some Canadian stuff out there. The Canadian Infantry put a podcast out a couple of years ago, and they got a decent amount of episodes out there, although it kind of uh, fell apart there, it seems, after a year or two when some uh, people changed staffing positions or whatnot, but that happens. Why am I telling you all this? Because, uh, just so you know my basic outline of what my plans are and as far as my personal life outside of the channel, because this is a side hobby slash business slash entrepreneurial endeavor, uh, but it's been interesting. It's been great. I've met and, well, kind of met some interesting folks and some very uh, helpful people of the knife community, and of course, we all know the knife community is great. So while I'll be doing a more full, long, in-depth uh, hog vlog, well, I'll discuss my uh, personal endeavors and stuff there. This is just a quick little personal slash channel update to let you know what's up. And what is up is I fucked my back up. My back was always a little bit tight. Uh, as I went into the medical process, I was pretty honest with them all about it. You go through a lot of screening and initial stuff getting in the military. I've played sports and done martial arts and a bunch of stuff. And I am a little bit tight and banged up and not in the worst of shape, but I just kind of told them what my issues were. Uh, I didn't overplay anything. I tried not to underplay anything. I was just being pretty factual that, hey, feeling pretty good. At 28, 29 when I recruited, uh, 30 now, I was going in with a little bit of upper back tightness, but I actually, you know what, it had been pretty much gone for a couple of years because I had spent a lot of time doing a lot more yoga and again, a lot less jujitsu and stuff like that and focusing on stuff that was better for my shoulder and arm mobility. And uh, again, the yoga, Filipino martial arts and staff and stick work and all that stuff was actually a big part of that. And knife work, obviously, I always forget to say knife work in that with the Filipino martial arts, but uh, you know, stick as a knife, as a knife, as a sword, as a bat, it's all transferable stuff. Really good for the mobility. Uh, what was not good for my mobility was rucking, well, and let me just say, rucking overall, not a big deal. Done a decent amount of rucking and just carrying weight on my back in awkward position throughout my previous job around the wildfire gig and forestry and just different stuff uh, that I've gotten into. A lot of weird labor jobs, lobster fishing, working on odd kind of farms and stuff like that. Definitely not a stranger to work or labor or rucking or carrying things on my back. What ended up being the final straw to break my back was, and not break it, but you know, uh, send me into some pretty fun spasms, was rucking with plates and then the ruck on top of it. Now I've had a, say a tight T-spine for a while. The top of the plate kind of sits right around my 267, which is sort of the area I'm not wanting to get really super, uh, you know, 
beat up and crunched and mobilized. And unfortunately, with a rock on top of that plate, it causes it to be a bit of a leverage point, and that's sort of where most of the pivoting and moving happens. Anyways, let me just tell you, uh, the injury train is part of the military. It's part of getting into the infantry or combat arms. And, well, anything above that obviously requires more sacrifice, more physical fitness. So I hurt my back on a ruck, about 2K into a 5K on flat ground. It wasn't that bad. It was the first week of developmental phase one infantry, which is your battle school uh, for Canadian forces anyways. That is a 12 week at the time I took it anyways as a 12 week uh, program, 12 week course. And you go through six weeks of learning all the weapon systems in classrooms and on the ranges and getting qualified. And then another six weeks of being in the field. That first week, uh, second or third ruck that we did, uh, we all got bronchitis, by the way, just part of the, not say we all got bronchitis, but a decent chunk of us got bronchitis, as you do tend to get things spreading around uh, when you're in closed living environments and your sleep depth and all that other stuff. It's just, again, part of training, part of course, part of living in shacks and stuff. But uh, I went to cough and spit out a big old loogie out to the side of me. Didn't want to do that on my buddies behind me so I really exaggerated the movement. As I did that, I had to cough again really aggressively and did not like what happened after that. So the upper back started to get tight, managed to finish the 3K of the ruck. When we put the rucks down to stretch, we were doing a couple things like the quad stretch where you grab your leg behind your uh, back. Well, as soon as I went to do that, the back locked up and I just kind of, you know, lifted my leg up behind me and just kind of stood there to not draw too much attention and get jacked up for no reason and didn't want to really, yeah, that to be the object of the attention of the staff on the parade square. So from there, it went upstairs, laid up on my bed for a couple hours, you know, uh, spasmed for a decent little while, basically was locked out, absolutely immobilized. I have never and hoped not to experience that ever again. I'm sure there's worse pain and people definitely experience and sacrifice a lot more in the military. I'm not trying to say that my uh, pain is definitely in any way measurable to that. Let's just get that right out there in the open. However, this was the first time in my life I felt absolutely 100% totally immobilized and useless and a much smaller, less physically capable, less trained person could have pretty much made me their bitch. So after that, I ended up trying to go through the process of being on a medical chip for a couple of days, which would restrict my PT and allow me to recover enough to try some light rocks with like a 20 pound day pack on. I do that Thursday, Friday weekend. I'd recover, do a little bit of stretching, feel it out, a little bit of band work, stuff like that. Monday, go in, try a rock or PT. Maybe I'd feel okay, depending if it was a ruck with, uh, like say, just PT clothes on and no plates. Uh, I could pace it and I could kind of do things okay and set the ruck up so that it was sitting good. However, once the plates came into play, uh, we ended up just getting in positions where you're either starting or stopping or moving or turning and no matter how I adjust the ruck it settles in that terrible place and then things just go downhill from there. Now about three weeks in there was one point where I decided to try and David Goggins myself through this. I'm very familiar with the books and the podcasts and now I know nobody has to run on broken shins however there's a there's something to be taken from all these people and uh, well let's just say like probably one of the toughest sons of bitches on the planet. Definitely things that can be learned from Goggins and his book and the audiobook and all that. If you haven't heard it, listen to it. If you're too cynical about the Goggins thing, maybe give it an honest try because he does actually show a lot of humility in that book. Anyways, I tried to go into the deep, dark cookie jar of all my terrible things that I have in my mind about why I want to try and push and work hard and do all the things I want to do. And in the end, I pushed myself up a hill to the point where I ended up collapsing and my warrant officer, who was a very scary boogeyman-like man, ended up kind of breaking his shell and running up to me and basically like helping me take the rock off my back and showing me like, wow, what, well, uh, the facade of, well, <laughs> not really facade, that's a scary, scary man, but the, uh, the immovable mask that he had on kind of came off for a minute and he was actually showing me like a lot of empathy and care and like all that stuff. Now, in a way that sort of allowed me to drop my tough guy act in a bit, which whether that was good or bad, I'm not sure. But in the moment, there was really not much I could do other than collapse on the side of the hill and wait to be picked up by a truck or something. So that sucked. I really thought uh, I was mentally and physically able to push through more than that. That was a very humbling, not just that, but you know, basic training had its moments too. I forgot my canteen a couple of times and some very funny stories I'll divulge in the full uh, hog vlog of my, well, scatterbrain sort of leading me to talk and do things and other stuff that involve me forgetting stuff. So yeah, that would be my weakness I found through basic was making sure I've got stuff attached to you and or in front of me so I do not forget them once we get busy doing stuff. So this first attempt at battle school ended up 
coming to a close at week six. My sergeant, who was in charge of my section of like eight to 10 people through both basic and battle school, who was an infantry sergeant, really experienced guy, super awesome dude, and absolutely the epitome of the type of human I wanted to meet when coming here, the type of leader I wanted to meet when coming here, because it's like any organization, there's a, a bell curve of things that you can see here as far as good leadership, bad leadership, uh, motivated people and non-motivated people and all that well this guy is the guy the kind of the guy that i wanted to run into here so i uh, seen a lot of good examples seen some bad examples more or less the feeling i got from the brief conversation that he had with me was that i, I you know i gathered that he knew i wasn't one of those guys again chip monkeys being the reference medical chip being a, that people who are basically wanting to get off course because it is hard and they figure the medical chip system is and it is the easiest way for them to get off of there. So that is what a chip monkey is. We don't want to be one of those. Well, this uh, sergeant of mine ended up kind of helping me break down that little mental thing I had built up in my head of I will leave this place dead or on a stretcher before I finish two contracts. Well, maybe I need to take a second and make sure that I could walk past the age of 35 and wasn't one of those guys who were super jacked up and miserable and couldn't do anything other than sit around and drink and bitch at people for the rest of their uh, the second half of their life. So that was the start of me trying to think about things a little more rationally, and I ended up getting to the point where I basically allowed myself to get a chip where I was going to be pulled off course so I could recover for a few months and turn to go on another course coming up in September. So that all happened in May, uh, June when I got injured, and uh, coming up September after three months of recovering and I got to lift and stretch and do a lot of stuff within my chits and limitations, of course, to build my body back up. And basically my job was to train and that was awesome. So I did a few tasks here and there as we needed to clean and move guns and stuff. That was, uh, you know, just kind of minor clerical duties and stuff here and there as well. But other than that, pretty much just trained and that was super helpful. And within three months, I got my back sort of squared away and my baseline of strength back to where I was kind of pulling like, you know, uh, I think I could easily say I could probably do like maybe five or 10 pull-ups without like any kind of major pain, but I wasn't really built up to like where I was before. Uh, but on that second infantry battle school, we got moved to a different base in September and I ended up getting, geez, not even a week and a half into that course. And the second week we were doing some stuff in the field on the range, super easy range days, just setting up hooches on a really nice fall night, uh, shooting and doing the nods and stuff and the uh, night shoots and just camping out. And the staff weren't even jacking us up that hard. They were actually as nice to us as they ever were on a course, uh, which if for your reference, you can't really be nice on these military courses because you got machine guns and eventually explosives and stuff. And people are dumb. And if people get too complacent, people will hurt themselves and each other and it won't be good. So they kind of have to keep you on your toes. Also, it's just part of the process and getting that stress inoculation, but uh, I digress. But yeah, within the couple days of just uh, jumping down into the prone with plates on, and uh, I don't want to use the plates as an excuse. There's ways to get around Around, like training in certain things but eventually if I'm going into combat I'm gonna to need to wear back plates and that really is the ultimate time where every time I've wore plates in a ruck I end up with my back super jacked up that rhymed so uh, that kind of is sort of the big thing where I know eventually I'd end up in a place where I'd be a liability my buddies would be carrying my ruck and my pack and all this stuff so while I was on that range I started thinking about this stuff and then started not making like safety violation mistakes I'm pretty good with my safety drills and all that but I was just like you know load a magazine and I'd be like sitting there with my magazine in my hand and my sergeant would be looking at me like hey you want to do something with that mag you're just holding I'm like holy crap so yeah I, my head wasn't in there I decided that day I was going to try and finish the db1 course but I was probably going to maybe uh, consider releasing from the military after finishing the course so I'd be qualified. If anything happened where I wanted to jump right in, I'd be fully trained and ready to go. And on the ruck the next morning, I ended up falling out very, very, very quickly. And uh, part of that, I got to admit, was the fact that I'd already made, and I'm already thinking about this right now, I get very, not emotional, but very uh, deeply thoughtful about why I made the decision that I did. And the thought went through my mind at the time and it's gone through my mind every, every time since. If I had never dropped that never quit mentality, would I have kept going and made it through? In the end, I think I probably could have and I would have passed the courses and all that stuff. I would have been pretty jacked up and at this point, it's been uh, poof, another three, three, four months, four months now since I got pulled off that second course. So anyways, as I fell out of that ruck and I was on the back of the truck, I bawled my little baby eyes out like a grown man that basically lost a little bit of a hope and dream and 
giant aspiration in life that I kind of only really picked up in the last five, six years, but it was definitely something I wanted to knock off the bucket list for myself and for a lot of reasons, but I will say, and I'll get into further details later on as I'm kind of feel more comfortable doing so, that the experience, there was a lot of things that lived up to the expectation. There were a lot of things that weren't, and I was pretty damn well prepared to know what I was getting myself into coming here. Uh, relative to most folks at least and uh yeah no we were all pretty much in the same boat myself and a lot of the caners very you know it's it's an interesting experience once you get to see something from the inside but uh yeah it's been a slice it's been an experience i've met some incredible people and some incredible lifelong friends but i did make the decision to voluntary release uh that process has all gone through and now that i finally have all this transition in place i figured i'd make this video and talk about it so uh all that big old talk and blurb to let you know that i did Voluntary release from the military. I have signed the paper as of this last week. My release date is March 21st of 2023. To you military folks who've been super positive and like, you know, like basically invited me into this whole military brotherhood and that, I very much appreciate the support. And I hope you understand that like, well, if you've been in the military, you know people will get out. I wanna hope you freaking well know I'm not that guy. We know who that guy is. We've all got that guy in our platoon. Uh, I've lived with them. I've had to deal with them as being part of these personnel awaiting training platoons uh yeah i'll never get rid of them but going back to what i'm doing now take a guess as to what all these knives are doing on the table figured you probably know uh maybe my backup plan might have been to do something that i've got some experience with already yeah no big secret these are knives that i expect i'll be using a lot of in the next few years on wildfires because I am going to commit fully to what I realized on that range uh, when I was kind of jacked up my back realizing I was going to be here. A lot of the times when I was doing stuff in the military, I very much should have enjoyed more and still did enjoy like being on the range. I was always thinking like, you know, I kind of enjoyed messing around with hoses and helicopters and throwing bear spears around a little bit more. And that's a weird thing to say, but I, yeah, I kind of really realized that the wildfire draw might have been uh, something that was a little bit more than a temporary thing and that I really think I may have found the thing that I'm best suited to, uh, let's say, do in the professional world. So uh, I am going to be working full-time, at least seasonal full-time. Uh, I'll be doing type one uh, initial attack wildfire stuff probably for the next several summers. Uh, this summer I'm getting hired on as a crew member, but more than likely as soon as I get hired, I'll be getting trained up and put in like a sub boss position. Uh, Cause again, I do have experience and stuff where I'm kind of coming from uh, my previous 10 years of wildfire and all that. So uh, I'm going to be hopefully able to use some, uh, use the next few summers to build up my experience on the ground with a lot of these really high level crews who've been doing this in some of the busier parts. Whereas I've come from out East and done a lot of my traveling a few times, maybe two, three trips a summer max to different provinces this next few summers. And then hopefully the next years I'll be doing uh, more, hopefully eventually year round fire science and fire suppression. And then eventually uh, there's all kinds of big plans that I might disclose a little bit of as I talk about in my hog vlog which will be coming up real friggin' soon because I got to do that sometime. But so that job is going to be somewheres in a province in Canada. I won't disclose which one because I'm going to be uploading videos and you're probably going to, well, there's the, the, yeah, you might be able to figure it out and hopefully as long as I have some plausible deniability and I'm good to my employers and don't put anything up there that's too ridiculous, I won't have any issues. But I just want to make sure that I'm uh, not overstepping my boundaries as far as well I, you sign different disclosures and stuff with these jobs especially because they're government agencies that you end up that sounds really fancy right you, you guys know government's government right i don't need to make government sound uh fancy because everyone knows it's just donkey with like flies buzzing around its tail okay cool we're on the same page there but yeah these government agencies do have things that you sign as far as social media stuff so you do have to be pretty careful about what you post and how you post it which is a big reason and honestly the number one reason why i am certainly uh a little more careful than some guys as far as what i say on this channel is in regards to self-defense and knives and all that kind of stuff i'm going to be asking you guys some questions about that coming up soon because i am planning on maybe upping my channel from like maybe like a pg-13 level to like more of a rated 18 and aperture uh but i'm gonna talk to you guys about that and do some hog pulls and stuff but this was yeah i think most of the stuff in the channel update involved me unfortunately getting out of the military and going to wildfire which is not yeah the way that i planned on having this whole next few years plan out but 
we had the contingency in place as well as some other contingencies to this contingency if that happened to be a thing but i pretty much the day that i really started to get this stuff underway and got my resume sent off and started making calls and got this job almost set up so uh feeling good feeling positive and yeah, feel free to comment down below if you think I'm a lazy, weak piece of garbage or a, a shit pump, as the Canadian military refers to the weakest of the useless and, well, meh, 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 pumping shit out of their mouths all the time. So, yeah, uh, or comment below, whatever, if you what do you think about the plans, the wildfire gig, or the knives here on this table, because I haven't talked about the knives all that much, but these are knives that I will and have, for the most part, used quite a bit of. A lot of Scandi grind stuff in the Moras. And uh, gonna get this condor out into action. The cans bowl I picked up specifically for the military, but with the thinner edge towards the tip and the little thicker, beefy, uh, typical Scandi grind stuff here on the base, I kind of think it's gonna be a nice little hybrid blade. But uh, yeah, will I end up using this all the time? Probably not. I like the big, thicker, uh, bulletproof, kind of beefy, I say beefy too much on this channel, fixed blades. I do eat a lot of beef though. Tori Anaconda, I'm thinking about having mounted somewhere on my kit. Uh, like my wildfire kit, where say I do end up in one of those weird situations where a bear's on top of me or whatever, uh, kind of would be a nice little last last ditch knife. I do trust the sheath quite a bit, and I'm so used to having this on me. I wear a lot of stuff on my waistline when I'm doing fire, so I don't think I'm going to want to carry this in my typical spot, but I maybe I will. We'll see what happens. That'll be all kind of fun EDC slash wildfire setup stuff. I'm shaking my camera, sorry. That we can look at in the upcoming spring and summer. But the cool thing is, there's going to be all kinds of more bushcraft opportunities, way more bear spear throwing. And I'm going to start making a bunch of pole arms and stuff. Uh, combination of hanging out with a couple of nerds who are really into the historical martial arts and playing Mordhau over the last few months a little bit. Really got hooked on that game for a bit. Got really into the idea of making some sweet friggin' medieval weapons and stuff. At least some kind of makeshift medieval weapons. But, uh, phew, yeah, that's going to be a wild spring and summer. And I've got, yeah, all kinds of wicked fun video ideas. And I'm going to have way more time and space and freedom to do those very soon. So thanks for watching this video to its entirety if you have. Very impressive. Good on you. It's the longest one I've done in a while. I've been cutting down for my 25, 30 minute videos. So if you've been looking for one of these, uh, yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. And if not, well, this is not going to be a normal thing, but the hog vlog is probably going to be about twice the length of this where I will go into more personal details and I'll probably touch briefly on some of the stuff I mentioned here. So uh, see you on that one or the weekly upload on Monday or check out the giveaway coming up. Uploaded a short just before this video uh, yesterday, I do believe, as far as the video timelines when these got released. But to check out the giveaway teaser, and then this coming weekend, the uh, last weekend of February, yes, there will be a uh, detailed official rules and all that stuff, uh, GA video coming up, and the video, or rather the giveaway date will be March the 4th. So that's coming up very soon, the next couple weeks. You'll have a week to enter that one. But yeah, I think that's going to be more than enough editing for me. So thanks for watching again, and like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Hard on Gear Channel, signing off.